Hey guys, Scare9 here. Welcome back to my channel today. And in this video, we are going to be discussing all of the huge changes that are coming to the game next Tuesday on January the 30th. Now, every one of the changes that we're going to be talking about in this video is absolutely groundbreaking for Destiny 2. I'm personally very excited to see all of this implemented. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing is more of a time exclusive thing. So I definitely want to go ahead and address it first. And that is going to be Iron Banner. Now, Iron Banner will also start next Tuesday whenever they are done updating the servers and implementing all the changes. They expect for all this updating to be done around noon Pacific time or around three o'clock Eastern time. So definitely look out for that because none of the game changes will be available until that time and the game servers will be down as well. So the first time you will be able to play that day is when Iron Banner goes live and when all of these other changes will be made live as well. Now for this Iron Banner, we are actually going back to the game mode control and there are three brand new weapons being added. There's a new hand cannon, a new scout rifle, and a new shotgun. Now in addition to these weapons being added to the regular Iron Banner and Grand Pool, you will actually be able to directly purchase these from Lord Saladin himself for a combination of legendary shards and Iron Banner tokens. In addition, there will be a brand new Ghost, Sparrow, and Ship available to earn, and if you complete the weekly milestone for Iron Banner, you will be able to earn an emblem that shows your total number of times ranking up within the Iron Banner across all of the different seasons. Now, in addition to all of these amazing changes, there will also be a brand new ornament set available for all three characters, which are all look amazing. They have a very samurai feel to them. They just look so good. I love the hunter's horns. I really just can't wait to earn all of this stuff next week. Now, the next thing that they are going to be implementing next Tuesday is going to be Masterwork Armor Pieces. Now, these seem to function extremely similar to Weapon Masterworks, but they have been modified a little bit. So, each armor piece that you have as a Masterwork will grant a 3% damage resistance increase while you are using a super. So, obviously, if you have all five pieces of your armor set Masterworks, they will provide a total of 15% extra damage resistance while you are in your super. In addition, each armor piece that is a Masterwork will be able to be re-rolled for the cost of one Masterwork core and 10 legendary shards and for these things you are able to change its focus. So you can take a resilience based chest piece and turn it into a recovery based just by re-rolling it. Which that feature alone definitely makes masterwork armors worth it. My big thing is I really want to have full sets of recovery on all three of my characters so I cannot wait to jump into the game and get all this done and I highly recommend that you guys actually focus on recovery too because it has been proven to do the most out of any of the three stats. Now next they will be adding brand new raid rewards into the game. All new armor sets and armor sets that you currently own from the raid will be updated with brand new mods pertaining specifically to the raid. So if you already have a set of full prestige armor, you do not have to grind that out again. The perks will automatically be on them. Now, instead of you being able to equip any mods that you want to on these armor pieces, they will now instead come with an intrinsic selection of raid exclusive mods that will make your life in the raids just a little bit easier. For example, they showed a class item which makes your solar abilities do 25% more damage while you are fighting on the Leviathan, but you can also spend one raid token to switch that over to the Arc and Void variants as well, just depending on what subclass you were using for that raid. Now, in my opinion, this was the perfect implementation of raid perks within Destiny 2. Make them customizable, but make them very effective too. They said they will in fact not be doing any mechanic-based modifiers for these different mods, meaning that there won't be any based on something weird like shooting a Scion or being a specific person. Instead, they are going to be very much more general like this one or like making you do more damage shortly after getting a melee kill. Now to the raids, they will also be introducing the concept of double drops from Destiny 1. Essentially, if you complete the prestige mode of a raid, you will also get the drops from the normal mode if you have not yet done it that week. And then the raid vendor will now also sell all normal and prestige armor for a combination of legendary shards and callous tokens. However, there is one caveat to this. You will not be able to purchase the prestige armor from Benedict unless you have currently completed the prestige raid that week. Essentially, this just makes it so that a player who only grinds normal mode raids can get the entire prestige set, you still do need to complete the prestige raid at least once in order to get the full sets, but it just makes it a little bit easier because people have pretty bad RNG. Now, they are also making it so that exotics have a chance to come from the chests, and it's not only an exotic engram, the real exotic will drop right there from the chest. So you will be able to earn something directly from an encounter without having to go to the tower to crypt it and then go back into the raid. Now, the final improvement to the raid, and what is the most promising to me, is going to be the 
brand new ghost shell, the Contender Shell. This is a ghost shell that will drop exclusively from the Callus Encounter and from the Argos Encounter, and it will only affect things while you were doing the raids. However, it is a perfect example of the raid-specific loot I want to come back with in Destiny. I want to raid Ship, I want to raid Sparrow, I want to raid Emote. Eventually, all of these things need to be added into the game, and this is a perfect starting point. Now, the Contender Shell has three main perks that make it very significant. The first one is called Seeker of Brilliance, and it makes it so that whenever you complete an encounter, you have a chance for a Bright Engram to drop. And in addition to that, anytime a Bright Engram does not drop, you are even more likely to get a Bright Engram from the next encounter you complete. Now, the next perk on this Ghost Shell is going to be the Seeker of Opulence, which essentially just makes it 50% more likely for you to get an exotic you currently do not have when completing an encounter. And the third and final perk is going to be Seeker of Glory, which just tracks the number of encounters you have fully completed while on the Leviathan. And this counts for the Leviathan Raid and the Eater of Worlds Raid layer, and presumably the second raid layer coming with the second DLC as well. Now, like I said, this Ghost Shell is the perfect example of what raid loot needs to look like in Destiny 2, and that actually goes for the raid-specific mods as well. Both make your life in the raid a little bit easier, make them more rewarding, but overall, it really just gives you something to grind for. After I do the raid five or six times and I have the full armor set, what's keeping me coming back to it? Things like this Ghost Shell are going to keep me coming back to it. Additional rewards, grinding out for the Ghost Shell itself, and then even once I have everything, make the raid more rewarding. I love doing the raid, but I also want to have a carrot on a stick no matter how many times I've done it. So this is brilliant. I cannot wait to see this implemented. Now, the very final thing that they addressed in this update was going to be the shader problem. A lot of people have been asking why they don't just make it. So whenever you delete one, it deletes the entire stack. And they actually explain how there's a lot of technological limitations on their system. So they cannot effectively make this happen without messing some things up. However, they did tell us what they are going to try to do with the shader system. First off, they are trying to reintegrate the Destiny 1 shader mechanics without losing the extra customization options of being able to individually shade each weapon and armor piece. Essentially, they want you to be able to customize all of these different pieces with different shaders without them actually being consumables. And they said, worst case scenario, they will still be consumables. However, there will be a shader collection so you can just go print off duplicates of the shader. So this is definitely something I wanted to hear. Christopher Barrett and his team seems to have an amazing capability to hear what the community wants, but also expand it and make our ideas that much greater. We wanted brand new and more rewarding stuff from the raid, but these new armor mods and this new ghost seem to just take that to an entire new level. And the same thing goes for the shader system. I'm very confident that they will find a fix for that and that it will be implemented very soon. And I cannot wait to see what the two other updates that are in the near future hold for us. So out of everything that we learned today, let me know what your favorite is down in the comment section below. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. If you're interested in watching either of the two videos on screen, you can click their respective annotations to be taken to them. If you are brand new to my channel, make sure to hit the giant version of my logo on screen to be subscribed to more awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you in my next video.